Hello everyone and welcome back to another book review. Today I am going to be reviewing Mathematics for Human Flourishing by Francis Sue with Reflections by Christopher Jackson. This is what the cover looks like and this has been on my to read list for a long time now and I kept putting it off which was a shame because this is one of the best math books I have read in a while. Euler's Gem which I just reviewed Excluded which was another fantastic math book. At this point, I've actually read a couple fantastic math books in a row, so I feel like I'm on a kick with this subject. So I'm going to be discussing today what the contents of Mathematics for Human Flourishing is, what Francis Sue was writing about, the question he is trying to tackle, as well as my thoughts on the book and who I think should read this book. So let's dive in. First, I want to discuss the contents of this book because it is a math book and mathematics is in the title. However, I also think that this book is a philosophical book. The question that Francis Sue is attempting to tackle is what math means in regard to being human. So what does math have to do with being human and how can math lead to a better human life or to put it in the terms of the title, a human flourishing? How can you as a human flourish with your relationship with mathematics? And I think this is a very interesting topic because many people do not have a good experience with mathematics, particularly with regard to their mathematic, formal mathematics training that they received when they were in school. So I think he's kind of tackling this broader question instead of how do you do algebra or what's the meaning of calculus and how does it apply to life? He's taking a step back and saying, how can math make you flourish as a human? Which is a question that I think a lot of people would resist. And he explores this question through the idea of themes or virtues that he discusses. So different ways math can contribute to a good life. He starts with just flourishing overall, and he goes into topics like exploration, meaning, play, beauty, permanence, truth, struggle, power, justice, freedom, community, and finally, love. And I think what sticks out to anyone who looks at this contents page is that none of these are words that you would typically find in the content section of a mathematics book. I'm going to be reviewing another book here shortly, and I'm just going to read the contents of this other math book that I'm going to be reviewing, what that contents page looks like. And you can tell immediately that there is going to be a big difference. If I can find the page. What is topology? Making surfaces. The plane in other spaces. Flavors of topology. Very math sounding content. So already Francis Sue is taking the opportunity to step away from the jargon and the terminology of math to discuss big concepts. What about play in mathematics? What about the permanence of mathematics? What about the struggle of mathematics? And I really appreciate that. So he there is an idea that I think a lot of people can understand, and that is math underpins a lot of what we do in life. Math underpins a lot of our decisions, a lot of the day-to-day -day world that we live in. And sorry, my cat is scratching the sofa. <laughs> and we understand that math is really important to having a good, rich life around us, but a lot of us think that math is for others. Math is for other people, math is for smart people. And Francis Sue is trying to explain that you can benefit from doing math, from learning math, from exploring math, from understanding math better, even if you feel like you've had a poor relationship in the past because math is so present, ever present in the world around us and is such an important part of the world that we live in today. And by going through these virtues, he talks about the importance of struggling through problems, the permanence of mathematics, the beauty that can be found in math, and each of these virtues is explained in more philosophical language as it relates to math. So never in this book, or very rarely in this book, are you going to see mathematical notation. Here we have community. Community is not a word that we think of when we think of math. And as you can see, as I go through page after page, there's no mathematic notation. We're not learning how to do algebra. We're not exploring geometry. We're not discussing the history of mathematicians. We're discussing community and how it relates to math. So I think he's making it accessible to people who have a fear of math or who don't like math at all. I wanna go through a couple takeaways from the book that I personally liked, although in honesty, I liked almost every single page in this book. This was one of the best book math books I have read in a long time, including the book Euler's Gem, which I just read and reviewed, which was another fantastic read. And there's three things I do wanna talk about just to kind of explain what Francis Sue is talking about in this book and maybe get you interested to read the book yourself. The first is his assertion that math is for everyone. And the, the, 
analogy that I came up with in reading this section was just like running, which is something that I think a lot of us don't understand. And I'm going not running math for everyone. People understand running. So I'm going to first do my running analogy and then that I kind of made up and then talk about how math is for everyone. So we understand that there's going to be the big names in running, the people who are running marathons, breaking records, people who are running the fastest times. We know names like Usain Bolt. We know people who run in the marathons. We love seeing people run fast marathon times, uh, but it's, we understand that running has benefits for everybody. We don't, you don't have to run a 220 marathon time to be gaining health benefits from running, to understand the community of running, to understand the love of running, to understand that running has health benefits for your heart, for your ability to do other cardiac activities. There's a whole slew of benefits to running and you can get a lot of these virtues and benefits from running without being one of the greatest. And the greatest are gonna push limits and be fun to watch and be enjoyable to follow, but you don't have to be a great to reap the benefits. But when it comes to math, we tend to think that only the best are the people who are cut out for math. Think about the people who are the best in your high school math classes. You just understood, okay, they're, they're math people. That's a word that we usually use. They're math people. But we don't just assume people who run a 220 marathon or a sub 220 marathon are the running people and the rest of us have no shot. We don't need to be messing with math. We, we ran in gym class and we never need to run again. And thinking that you can get benefits from math if you aren't in the top is silly. That is not how math works. It's not how running works. And math is for everyone. And he emphasizes that grades are not an indicator of your ability to get benefit from math. Grades are an indicator of maybe how well you took that test, how well you understood that material at that time. It's really an understanding of your background to the point of taking that test. How much did you learn up to this time? It has no indication of whether or not you can learn or gain benefits in the future. If I were to go out and run today and I ran a 17 minute mile, that says nothing of my ability to bring my mile time down to an eight or seven minute mile. There may be some limits and I think that there's some ideas about the natural capacity of each person when it comes to the mathematics. There maybe are some people who can run faster. There are people who can do mathematics better, but it doesn't mean that you can't improve and you can't gain benefits from doing this activity yourself. Grades are not an indicator of your ability to gain further benefits from doing math. And also by benefit of looking, he addresses the teacher perspective too, by using the grade that a student gets on an exam and then writing off students who aren't doing well, you, are excluding that individual from gaining further benefit from mathematics, or you're writing off this individual as someone who could gain benefits from doing math. So I think he takes a long time to go through the idea that math is for everyone and your grades or your speed of learning or your ability to do it doesn't preclude you from gaining benefits from doing math and also accessing these virtues that he talks about. Second, he talks about math not just being learning about the manipulation of the math tactic. And this was something that I actually learned through my degree and my time after my degree. So I actually do have an undergraduate degree in mathematics and I was not a math person. I was not one of those math naturals who just picked everything up. I spent a lot of time in the college campus library reviewing things, watching YouTube videos, finding other professors online to explain the concept over and over, going to the office hours professor or the office hours of the professors, meeting up with other students to study. I had to put effort into getting that degree. But something that I really started to understand as the degree went on was I wasn't probably going to graduate. And because I knew I wasn't immediately going on to do any sort of advanced degree, and I definitely was not going to be doing any sort of PhD in mathematics, there, the, I wasn't going to be graduating and then doing the actual mathematics that I was learning in the class on a daily basis. But instead, the benefit of doing a math degree for me and that was impressed on us is the benefits or the virtues, as Francis Sue talks about, that doing math teaches us. So the first is patience. Your first attempt is not going to be probably the only attempt and you need to have patience as you work through a problem. All problems are not solved overnight. We think about big unsolved problems in mathematics or problems that became solved and it took a lot of work to get to that point. Next, he talks about approaching a problem in multiple ways. And this is something that's been really helpful in a wide variety of areas in my life, not just math, but I think was honed through math, is that when you have a problem and you approach it one way and you can't solve it, Part of the math degree is learning how to approach a problem multiple ways and also combining with the first point, having the patience to approach a problem in multiple ways. So I think that 
was something else that the degree taught me that Francis Sue also emphasizes, approaching a problem in multiple ways. And finally, something that I think all of us can still work on is comfort in being wrong. You might be wrong about something. In fact, you're going to get answers that are wrong. Nothing is worse than solving a problem, flipping to the back of the book, and seeing that your answer doesn't match the answer that's in the back of the textbook. That's frustrating. That's really frustrating. But part of math is understanding that that's going to happen a lot, and you need to be comfortable or you need to get more comfortable with being wrong because that will eventually lead you to the right solution. So these are some things that Francis Sue talks about and things that I've also discovered in my own studies through math when I was in college in that a math degree or studying math or the benefits of math extend well beyond learning the manipulation, let's say, of the symbols on the page to get your proof or get your solution. Finally, he talks about we all stand to gain for math, which kind of from math, which ties in with the first point. And Francis Sue makes a point that I was hoping he was going to make in the fact that math, this is upside down, math is rather exclusionary now. We, we've already addressed the point that teachers might see a kid who got a D on a assignment and or on an exam and think, well, this kid just isn't good at math. He just needs to get through this grade. Math isn't for him. He's struggling. He's behind. He doesn't understand the content. And maybe this kid has no interest in going on to study math. Maybe the kid is not going to get a PhD in mathematics, but he deserves to get the benefit of learning math. And that D only reflects where he is now. It doesn't show accurately how far he can go in the future. I have gotten my fair share of bad grades beyond math assignments math tests, and that had nothing to do with where I went in the future. In fact, when I took my college entrance exam here in the United States, I took the ACT, math was my lowest score. I actually got quite a good score overall, but math was rather average for me. And if I had gone just by that score, I would have said, let's not do math, let's do another topic that I scored higher in. But that indicator on that test had no indication of where my future trajectory in college was going to go. And I think it's very important to keep that in mind, especially if you're teaching math, that a grade is not an indicator of the ability to glean benefits or as Francis Yu calls them virtues from math and it doesn't indicate how far that student could go. Although I assume just like running all of us have a natural limit there's a natural limit where I'm not going to be able to understand or contribute to math anymore but by not being artificially stopped by a poor grade earlier in life I could go as far as I can and I'm sure I haven't hit my limit yet. I really recommend this book to anyone interested in math. I think it's very important if you're a teacher to maybe learn a better way to think about math. I think a lot of people's dislike of math comes from poor math teachers. And I think we have a shortage of good math teachers, at least here in the United States. And I am contributing to that. I do not go into math teaching. So I think if you teach students or even if you have maybe a kid that you your own kid or a kid that you're close to that you're talking with or that you do homework with maybe understanding ways to talk about math and the benefits of math could come from this book i know a very common question from kids is when am i going to use this that's a common question from kids when especially when it comes to math and i think having a book like this under your belt is a good book to have so you can talk about the benefits of math. If you're interested in math from maybe a more of a philosophical perspective or if you're curious about any of the ways that you can get benefits from math, maybe if it's been years since you've taken a math class and you're looking to get back into it but don't really understand any benefit beyond the pleasure of doing the manipulation correctly on the page, Mathematics for Human Flourishing is a fantastic book. Sue wrote a fantastic book. Oh, and I've totally forgotten the other part that I wanted to include, Reflections by Christopher Jackson. So throughout this book, Francis takes time to include letters that he received from Christopher Jackson, who is an individual serving prison time in the prison system here in the United States. He committed armed robbery as a young, or as a, a young adult, a late teen, I believe it was 19 years old, and he got sentenced to about 30 years in prison, I believe. But in this time, he picked up mathematics, and these reflections show that anyone from any background should not be barred from studying mathematics. As Jackson continues to self-study, he's gone quite far in his study of mathematics, and he's gained quite a bit of benefit from all the different virtues, well beyond just the manipulation or the time passage from this time that he has to spend in prison. And you can really see from the impact of his letters, the way that math has influenced Jackson's life and his communication with Francis Sue. I definitely did not want to forget that and I'm very sorry that I did. That is another important part that was very meaningful to this book and I think it really wraps up the idea that anyone can benefit from math and anyone can gain from learning math and exploring math on their own. So if anything I said in this book recent review sounds interesting or if you've read this book and have thoughts on it, please put it in the comment section down below. Otherwise, I highly recommend Mathematics for Human Flourishing by Francis Sue. Check it out, give it a read, and let me know what you thought about it. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a 